<laughs> Hello, my name is Austin. Happy Thursday. I'm at Hoffman Dental. Uh, we're going to be asking Dr. Hoffman some questions today. So, Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Hoffman. Uh, so we have a lot of patients that come to the practice with a lot of questions about dental implants. So we thought we'd sit down and talk to you today and see if you can answer some of those questions for potential implant patients. Be happy to. All righty. So why are implants a good option? Implants, we can use them for so many different things, right? So we can use an implant to replace a single tooth that's failed, been extracted for whatever reason. Uh, we can use implants to support a partial denture. So the patient already has a partial, but it's moving around, a lot of stress on the natural teeth. We can place select implants and secure that denture so it takes the stress off of those natural teeth and will allow that denture to stay in the mouth, uh, partial denture, much longer. We can use them to convert a conventional denture. So if you have something that's moving around all over in your mouth because you have no teeth, you can put implants in and still keep it removable if you want to, or you can use a conventional denture and you can fix that to the implants and make a implant retained fixed bridge. So now you know, you're able to eat apples, corn on the cob, whatever it is that you want. So implants can be used for single teeth, uh, multiple teeth, an entire arch or both arches of failing dentition. So they're you know, quite useful. Okay, what is an implant? Good question. So this is my hippopotamus implant right here, okay? <laughs> Very large, not what would actually go on your jaw, don't be worried. However, it does show you very well what it looks like, right? So this entire thing goes in bone. Again, hippopotamus size, not inside your bone, right? But the implant's much smaller. And the entire thing would seat in bone to here, okay? And this is basically a titanium bone screw. So this implant integrates to your jaw and becomes yours, okay, indistinguishable, from where your bone starts and where your bone ends, which is really cool. Then implants can be left in multiple fashions, right? So we can leave the implant like this with a cover screw, it's very flat, and we close the tissue over that and let that heal, okay? Or we can say, you know, we really wanna try to start healing the tissue right away, we have good bone support, uh, we have good torque values, and so we wanna put this on. And this is a healing moment. So your tissue goes up to about here, this sits up above the tissue a little bit and it allows the tissue to form and heal. And that process can take anywhere from three weeks to six months, depending upon what we're doing. Okay. Then we get to the final phase of everything. And this is an abutment. So this is placed in and this can be used for a single crown. This could be used for a set of crowns. And this is a screw and this just goes down into that <clears throat> abutment. And I have my, uh, very large driver, again, that would not go in your mouth. That is meant for a hippopotamus. And once that's done, you know, then this is all integrated. This sits above the tissue. And then we can do things like this. You know, we can go to this, which is a fixed crown on an implant. So crowns can go on either cemented or screw retained. Here at Hoffman Dental, we screw retain just about all of our crowns because that way, if we ever need to get back in and reaccess this implant, we have a problem with the crown, patient ate something, uh, ice, rocks, you know, jawbreak or something like that, and they cause a problem with the crown. We can literally get in and restore that crown within 10 minutes with a, the with a patient. If it's cement retained, uh, you know, that takes a lot longer. We may have to actually replace the entire crown. So usually with an implant, we will screw retain those, and that way should we ever get in there, we can break out our handy dandy screwdriver again for our hippopotamus remove the screw, and we have direct access to the implant all over again. So that's the nuts and bolts, quite literally, of an implant. All right, so what can implants be used for? What are all the options? Well, we can use an implant for a single tooth. So you have a single tooth that's failed in your mouth, and we can put a single implant where that single tooth was, put a single crown on it, and not touch the adjacent teeth, which makes it far and away better than a bridge, right? <clears throat> we can use it for multiple teeth. So if there's two or three teeth missing in an arch, we can put two or three implants in, individual crowns on those implants. We can do an implant to implant bridge if you're missing a long stretch of teeth, and that way you don't have to have an implant for every individual tooth, should you not want that. Uh, we can use them to support a partial denture. We can use them to support dentures. We can use them to replace an entire arch of teeth. So if a patient walks in and has failing dentition, periodontal disease, cavities everywhere, broken teeth, teeth broken off the gum line, uh, you know, all those teeth can be removed 
and implants can be placed in their locations and the patient can actually walk out with teeth in the exact same day, which is really cool. Uh, those are probably my favorite cases because patients walk out so happy and we see the patients the next day and uh, just the level of happiness with those patients able to eat again is, uh, it's humbling, you know, that you're part of that process. Okay, and can you show me some models of uh, the fixed and removable? Absolutely. So you're not gonna notice much difference in the teeth because <clears throat> what's underneath is really where it's at. So this is a fixed case and you can see there's implants, you know, down, you know, underneath the bone, right? And in this particular case, you can see there's little screw holes there and in the mouth, those will be covered with composite. You wouldn't see them. But that's where we actually screw these implants into this set of teeth. So this is an implant-supported fixed bridge. Okay, and clearly that does not come off. Okay. Then we can do a removable option, which you can see down in here, there's another set of implants in the bone. But this one will come off. And so now what you have is you have locators so we could do bars there's just different ways this can be done but in this particular case very simple locators and we can retrofit an existing denture or we can use a new denture and then this will snap on okay and that's not you know that's not coming off so you can eat corn on the cob you can eat an apple with this no problem no worries obviously same thing with this okay and we can also use it to support a partial denture so if a patient has a partial and the partials moving around or causing stress on the teeth, we can place strategically located implants and we can give that uh, partial support so that it will not cause harm to the natural dentition any longer. Okay, so what should a patient expect for discomfort during the surgeries? Nothing. I mean, uh, during the surgery, patient's sedated, so usually they're snoring, and, which is great because their mouth is open and makes me, my work easier, uh, but uh, they're, they're totally asleep. And we use anesthesia, so I mean, you know, they're not feeling any discomfort whatsoever at all or nothing. No, their discomfort after the surgery. You know, surprisingly, uh, patients tell me all the time that they're shocked at how little to no discomfort they have. So I never have patients talk to me about pain. This, it doesn't happen. Soreness, on a scale of zero to 10, so zero being absolutely no soreness whatsoever, 10 being you know the most imaginable soreness you could ever have, patients walk in anywhere between a zero and a two. Okay, so it's extremely manageable, and patients are usually very happy and excited and surprised at the minimal level of discomfort that they do have. And, and many tell me they have nothing. All right. Now, what is the process of the healing phase for an implant? So, again, this depends, but if we're putting an implant down in a native bone, so you already have bone, maybe we took one tooth out and we're putting an implant in immediately, it's very possible that we can load that implant the same day. So you actually walk out with a crown in your mouth the exact same day done. Uh, and we're able to do that because we have CEREC technology here too. So we can actually scan that implant once it's placed, mill the crown, place the crown on the implant, screw retained, graft everything, close it up, and the patient walks out. You can't even tell that they even saw us that day, except there may be one suture. That'll come out in you know a couple of weeks. <clears throat> and it can go all the way to six months. So if we have to do a bone graft at the same time we're placing implants, um, you know, then those cases can take six months in order to heal, in which case the patient will either have a temporary on or one of the healing abutments on that we showed earlier, and this will allow the tissue to heal around the implant. Make sure that goes in there properly. Okay, and then that, that would be what you would see. And that could be in there for a maximum of six months, and that's worst case scenario. Usually we're able to load things somewhere between three months uh, and um, in six months. Okay. Now I know we have some pictures up on the screen here. What would we be looking at? So this is a full mouth case. Uh, so this patient, we can go back. So this patient has a failing dentition, and uh, you can see there's periodontal disease associated here. Um, there is uh, you know poor crowns, poor placement of crowns, super eruption of teeth, crowding, broken teeth, previously placed implants that haven't been restored. Um, teeth that are broken off of the gum line. You know, we kind of have everything going on here. So we look at that, we, we call that uh, a terminal dentition, meaning there's really no amount of treatment that would be predictable that we could do in a case like that to try to keep her natural dentition, okay? So we look at that, we say, we're looking to remove all teeth and give her teeth based off of the supportive implants alone. Okay. We'll go through some photos. 
So that's what things would look like when we're done. Okay, so this is a completed case, and that is an upper implant supported fixed bridge uh, opposing a lower implant supported fixed bridge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Looks like good work. Graphs. That'd be great. I'm going to pull up some radiographs here. You have them before? <clears throat> okay, so that's an after. So this is what the patient looks like. Oh, there good. we go. That's great. So this is what the patient looks like. That's what I would put up. That, that's what the patient looks like before and after in this particular case. Okay, and you can see the failing dentition at the top. You can see the implant placement at the bottom. You can see what the natural teeth look like over to the left-hand side. And then that is immediately after surgery. So those are immediately placed implant supported fixed bridges. Temporary. Those will last for six months. And then they go on to a permanent set after that after healing is completed. All righty. Well, Dr. Hoffman, thank you for uh, answering those questions for me Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Um.